And very pleased to be joined now by a few of the Buckeyes returning stars, including Paris Campbell, wide receiver, Isaiah Prince, offensive tackle, Draymond Jones, defensive tackle. Great to have you guys with me. Appreciate Let's it. talk first about <laughs> last year. You were so close. You were the last team that was left out of the playoff, or I guess maybe the first team left yeah. out of the playoff, the, the team that, that didn't make it in. How has that served as a motivation for you guys heading into this year? I'm interested in hearing yeah. from each one of you, but but certainly start off, Paris. Uh, it's been huge. Um, you know, we kind of feel like we got snubbed a little bit. Um, you know, and in that moment, you know, we just kind of wanted to move on to the next opportunity. At the time, it hurt, um, you know, but we, we felt like we had one more tax, and um, I felt like we moved on from it, you know, and prepared well, and then um, wanted the outcome we wanted, so we are good. Isaiah, how has it motivated you in the offseason? Uh, it's definitely motivated me in a, in a huge way. I think we come to Ohio State to win games and win every game and win a national championship. I think that's our goal every year. And once that didn't happen last year and we didn't get into playoffs, we had to go home, look in the mirror, and reevaluate and get back to work. So when you say you had to reevaluate, have you done things differently than you did a year ago? I mean, my approach is always the same. I just try to work as hard as I can and, and let that and just control what I can control and let that take care of itself. How about you, Draymond? I mean, as a competitor, it leaves a, a bitter taste in your mouth seeing us get snubbed like that, especially when I thought, thought we were, like, very, very deserving of it. I mean, like the like guys over here were saying, it's back to the drawing board, man. All right, so let's talk about how you bounce back from that. Part of that has to be leadership. You're a returning captain. Mm -hmm. Give us a sense of how the leadership of this team has kind of rallied guys to not let that happen next year. Right. Um, it's been great. I think the number one thing for us right now is uh, with the – Losing a guy like JT Bird, losing a great player, losing a great leader. Um, the leaders of the team now have to be bigger than ever um, because, honestly, the whole team leaned on him when he was here. Um, we have guys like Isaiah, guys like Draymond. Uh, we have to take over that role and, you know, keep it pushing. Um, but it's all about work ethic, honestly. You know, we know if we work hard, you know, we'll get to the, the places that we want to be. So. I think it is interesting to kind of ponder a life without JT because it's been clear in talking to his teammates through the years and talking to Urban as well. You know, he's made it clear what a great leader JT was to be around. Who fills that void now, Draymond? How do you guys move on without a, a proven leader like him? I mean, it doesn't solely fall on one person. It's all of us. I mean, we all have a great amount of experience on our shoulders. I and mean, we got guys like us three, including Nick and and including guys like Dante Booker, who people seem to forget about. I mean, we're all a part of that now. It's more than just JT now. Okay, so as you try to move on, who are the guys who have really stepped forward and look to take this team on their shoulders? Uh, like they have said, I think I'm sitting next to two guys that have done a great job of leading. Uh, we got guys like Demetrius Knox, we got Johnny Dixon, we got Terry McLaurin, Jordan Fuller. Like, There's a lot of older guys on the team with a lot of game experience. It's fascinating to spend time around Coach Meyer, and we were talking about his record today, which is just staggering. I mean, the guy's lost eight games in this entire time right. at Ohio State. I mean, part of it is you guys sitting up here. He does an incredible job recruiting. We see Ohio State at the very top of the recruiting rankings every year, and that is a component. You certainly don't want to sell that short. On top of that, though, there's something else happening here. So I'm interested in each of your takes on this. Kind of what makes him a, a great coach? And Draymond, I can start with you and, and maybe work your way down, but what stands out? What have you learned from him about coaching? I mean, he teaches us how to be professional. I mean, he's not going out there and just telling us anything, just to motivate us. He, when he says it, he means it from the bottom of his heart. I mean, when a guy with a stature like Coach Meyer, I mean, when he talks to you, you better listen. Yeah, same thing with Dre said, I think. Coach Meyer doesn't accept average out of us. If you're at Ohio State, you're an elite player, so he expects greatness out of everybody. So he holds us to an extremely high standard. Like, we don't accept losing it. And we do stuff around the facility, like everything's competition. Like, you're not allowed to lose. Okay, so give me a sense of what that looks like when you're saying, hey, everything's a competition. Like, to what extent? Like, every little thing <laughs> every you do. Like, like, give me an example of something that no one would think you could compete in that you compete in. Like, spring ball, walking in for practices in the morning, like, they'd ask you a question about... <laughs> Ohio State history, like yeah, something that happened yeah. in the past, like you either win or you lose, like that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Like you go to practice and you do one-on-one -on -one reps, like who'd you go against? How many times did you lose or win? Like we, we keep track of everything. 
So trivia questions? You're competing on trivia <laughs> questions? We compete yeah, with everything, everything that we do. All right, what's the most obscure <laughs> facts about the history of Ohio State football you could oh, share with me? Oh, okay, look at them right now, man. It's, it's, it's facts for days, man. Yeah, yeah, it's facts I mean, for days. Tradition rich. But I mean. All right, well, give me a couple. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> well, if you don't know, then you're going to lose. <laughs> this isn't working out I well. I don't want I was like, he'll ask uh, how many wins does he have against the team up north. Something like that. Okay. Something like that. Everyone see answer? Six or no. Yeah. All right. See? Okay. I'm on top of it, man. Yeah? No. <laughs> All right. No, I just want to get a sense of, of, of what we're dealing with here. Why do you think that's so important to him? Why do you think competition in things that aren't going to look? That's not going to factor into right. whether or not you win a football game. If you know yeah. what your record against Michigan is, why is that important? Um, I think just the aspect of winning. Um, he tries to teach us that no matter what it is, no matter what we're doing, uh, you always want to win. No one loves a loser. You know what I mean? Uh, he always talks about accepting losing. Um, you know, he never wants those type of guys in our program. And um, guys that accept losing, you know, they, they, they tend to fail a lot. So he just always preaches about winning. Well, let's get into the success of this team. And, Draymond, I want to start with you. You could have gone into the draft. You decided to come back yeah. to be a part of this team again. What prompted that decision? Well, first and foremost, I promised my parents that I'd graduate here. But from a football aspect, I wanted to be more stout in the run and just gain some more weight so I can be here. More for prototype defensive tackle in the NFL. So how do you go about doing that? I mean, I know how you gain weight. I'm not going to tell, yeah. tell you my routine. Uh, <laughs> I, can, I can tell you how to gain weight, but I don't think kind of really the weight that, you, that you'd want to have. Right. right uh, but how do, you, how do you go about uh, improving yourself in those areas? Um, just being more professional. I mean, it's beyond just eating. You got to be able to come in in the morning a little extra, a little earlier than you want to, so you can get the proper treatment that you need for your body. And it starts there. Isaiah, some uncertainty on this line this year, and I think part of it is in your position, right? I mean, you start at right tackle. There's some thought maybe you go to left tackle. Now it seems like maybe you're going to be at right tackle. Right. Where does that stand? Uh, to me, I, I just want to be putting the best opportunity I can to help my teammates and my team to win games. I mean, if that means i got to play left tackle to help us win games, then that's fine with me. And it, it doesn't matter for that right tackle either. As you look back on your career to this point, I mean, you may have been one of the most improved players in the conference last year. What did you attribute that improvement to? Uh, just my teammates, my brothers just staying on me. They, they knew what I was capable of. Um, and just basically helping me change my mindset, just not getting so down on myself when I'm mistaken, just continue to work hard through, through the adversity. Paris, I know at times you've been a little frustrated with drops in your career. So what have you done in this offseason to work on negating that part yeah. of your game? Uh, well, we have a... I think with the entire uh, wideout unit, um, Coach Mick actually came up with it, and um, he he made every every wideout catch 10,000 balls this uh, off season. And uh, we have a chart um, in our indoor actually, you know, where we're keeping track of how many balls we're catching this off season. Um, you know, so that's the thing that uh, we want to eliminate throughout the entire room. You know, I I've had you know my handful of them, uh, which is disappointing. Um, you know, but coming forth this season, uh, that's been my main uh, focus this whole off season. So. We're going to eliminate them from this, from this 10, ball. 10,000 balls. What does that look like? How, yeah. how long is a session on the jugs machine there? <laughs> Anywhere from an hour to two hours. And, I mean, it's, it's a, a variety of things. Just, you know, catching jugs, catching tennis balls, um, throwing with the quarterbacks. It's a variety of things. So, uh, New quarterback, as we talk about, we're talking about JT's leadership. Let's talk about the actual, you know, throwing and catching right. of the football. <laughs> uh, start with Dwayne. I'm interested in Tate as well. But, mm -hmm. but start with Dwayne. What have you seen from him? A guy who stepped up when you guys needed him to yeah. last year. What should we expect from him at that spot? Um, honestly, Dwayne, he's blessed, man. He's, he's blessed with a, a gift that most quarterbacks don't have. Um, he has a, a cannon for an arm. Um, you know, he's poised. He's confident. Um, and I, I think that's going to build through training camp um, just with, uh, you know, uh, experiencing adverse situations on the field, uh, whether that's having a bad day as an offense, but then turning around and having a good day. And, you know, it's going to ultimately fall on him because he's the quarterback. That's his role. Um, but I think he's just going to, uh, you know, dominate. He's going to build throughout this training camp. It's going to be great for us. So that's Dwayne. What about Tate? Uh, Tate, he's elusive, man. Um, he does some things with, with his feet that most quarterbacks can't do. But I think people also underestimate his arm, but he can sling it as well. Um, I think we just have two, uh, you know, prominent guys at that position, man. I think that position is in great hands. Isaiah, give us a sense of how each one of those guys leads when they're in the huddle. Uh, Dwayne, is, I think Dwayne has done a better job as he's gone through the offseason and being more vocal and, be, and stepping into that leadership role as, as we need him to be. And so has Tay. I think watching them compete during the workouts and push each other to be those, those great leaders and be focal and just be more expressive during the workouts. I, I feel like in the past they've 
they've been more to themselves because JT was here. And I think watching them come out of them shell and them doing it together and as we go through this offseason has, has been a great experience and extremely, like, happy to watch. Draymond, this defensive line has been an area of strength year in and year out for you guys. I think this year is no different. One guy who's getting a ton of hype, Nick Bosa. How have you seen him handle that scrutiny that he's getting? It's not hype, number one. <laughs> it's not a hype, it's, it's real, right? It's real, dog. But um, he's not another well. I mean, Nick's really mature from freshman year to now. He's learning every day. I mean, sometimes you sit back and wonder, can he get better? Like, can a person of that caliber get better? And then he does it. So I'm proud of Nick, and he's going to perform well this year. Where have you seen him get better? Um, He's already a technician before, and he's become even more of a technician. I mean, with steps and hand placement of own linemen and how to properly time up your uh, your side scissors when you're trying to block up a defender or own lineman. Now, Coach Meyer was saying, I mean, you know, we can talk about Nick. Let's talk about you. He <laughs> said you may have been the most improved player on your team in the spring. What do you think you improved on? Uh, just being a more professional in the game of football because, you know, my first two years, uh, I feel like if things go wrong, they can just rely on the older guys and they'll take up, they'll make up for what I did wrong. But now it's just like, I can't be a thing anymore. I'm the old guy, I have the most experience. I have to be a better player for my career. Isaiah, what's it been like to go up against this defensive line? How do you think that's improved you as an offensive lineman? I think it's improved tremendously. Like going to battle every day against that great defense, like every play is a war. Every play is. You have to be extremely focused or, or so you're going to lose that rep. Like you said at Ohio State, we, we don't take losing lightly. So me going out there against that great defensive line, I got to win. So I got to be on my A game. And just playing against them helps a lot. I don't, I don't think I'll ever face a defensive line as good as Ohio State's defensive line on a Saturday. Good stuff. Paris <laughs> Campbell, Isaiah Prince, Draymond Jones. Guys, best of luck this year. Really fun to visit with all three of you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.